Um, I wanted to move on to health care. Yeah. Uh, you've written a lot about uh, kind of the big policy yeah. uh, problems in our country and how we deliver health care. Yeah. What with the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare kind of now in full phase, what is your response to it? How has it been? Uh, I think the Affordable Care Act is a very small step in the right direction. It has extended coverage to more people. It curbs some of the worst excesses of the big insurers. Um, it puts some token money into prevention and health promotion. I don't think it does anything to get to the root of why we have healthcare crisis. You know, we need a different kind of medicine. We can't deliver high-tech medicine to everyone in our country. It's, it's wasteful, and in addition, it does not deal with the lifestyle-related chronic diseases that are the big problem now. And we have to ask ourselves, why can't we do a better job at prevention and health promotion? Simple answer is they don't pay. Until we can figure out how to make that pay, we're not going to get anywhere. I very firmly believe that integrative medicine is the future. You know, it, it, it can improve health outcomes and lower costs. And it can lower costs in two ways. One is by really focusing on lifestyle medicine and prevention. And secondly, by bringing into the mainstream treatments that are not dependent on expensive technology that work quite well. What do you mean by lifestyle? Lifestyle medicine is a big piece of what we teach at the Arizona Center, and this is really looking carefully at how people eat, how they exercise, how they rest, how they sleep, the nature of their relationships, um, you know, really all of the elements that go into influencing health and disease risk. Conventional doctors are not trained in how to really uh, analyze lifestyles of patients, and they don't have time in the situations in, the, in which they work to ask the questions. Is that something that patients need to bring forward to their doctors and try to incorporate that, or how do you do sure, that? Sure, but if you've got ten, a 10-minute ten visit, it's right. hard to do that, and that's a big problem. So, you know, we, we've opened a an integrative primary care clinic in Phoenix, and we expect to open one here in Tucson in a year. And the, an initial visit at, the, at those clinics is 90 minutes. And that gives a doctor ample time to really get a sense of who the patient is and to go into these aspects of lifestyle medicine. What about the intersection of politics and health care? Well, it's huge. You know, the, 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 the basic problem is that there are very powerful vested interests in this country that are making out like bandits from our dysfunctional health system. And they are the big pharmaceutical companies, the manufacturers of medical devices, and the big insurers. They don't want anything to change. And they call the shots. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. You can't get elected to office in this country unless you've made deals with those interests. How is that going to change? You know, I don't think we can expect change to come from our elected representatives. The only way change is going to happen is if there is a grassroots movement in which enough people get angry enough about the situation to begin change things. Grassroots movements <laughs> can be very effective, but at the moment, I don't see that happening. I think these interests are very able to manipulate public opinion in the directions they want. One of the things that if you go to the grocery store, you're bombarded. <clears throat> I mean, it's sensory overload. Right. Um, is that part of the, the issue that we just, we have so many choices that we don't know how to differentiate? Well, it's not just that. It's not, not only do we have so many choices, we, so many of those choices are, are bad for us, and often the, the worst choices are cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, it, just look at food. We have made the unhealthiest food cheapest and most available, and people buy what's cheapest and most available. And when you get to, to look at why that is, it's, some of it is our government is doing it. Our government is subsidizing commodity crops that drive down the price of ingredients like refined soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup, which are everywhere in mm -hmm. processed food and fast food. Some of it is that the uh, corporations have such power and influence people so much through advertising. So, you know, it's, it, it, is, it is such a big knotted mess, and I, it's hard to know even where to, where to start there. I mean, I'm a great believer in education, so I would certainly put a lot of effort into that. Um, but I think we have to experiment with things like putting sin taxes on sodas, for example, curbing advertising of foods that are driving the obesity epidemic. Um, you know, something like 47% of hospitals in this country have fast food restaurants on their premises. Um, so, you know, whenever you try to change these things, you run up against these very powerful interests that don't want anything to change. Thanks very much for being with us. I'm Sarah Garrett-Gasson for Newsmakers. We'll see you next time. <laughs>